What is up guys? We are back with another video and today we're checking out this big air cooler right here. This is Cooler Master's Master Air MA620M. So let's go ahead and take a look. Taking a first look at the Cooler Master Master Air MA620M, it looks a little bit different than most CPU coolers out there. It basically looks like a single large heatsink, but there's actually a fan hidden in the center. The fan is Cooler Master's own SF120R, which is a 120 millimeter PWM fan that runs between 650 and 2000 RPM with a max airflow of 57.3 CFM and a noise level between 8 and 30 dBA. The cooler is actually quite big and is designed as a dual tower cooler with two large aluminum heatsink towers. Cooler Master has made notches towards the bottom of each tower, so you won't run into any clearance issues with memory or VRM cooling. The top of the cooler is capped off, which I actually really like, and up top you'll find a Cooler Master logo and a diffuse section which will light up with RGB lighting which we'll show you here in just a little bit. Moving down to the bottom of the cooler, there are six copper heat pipes which are painted black to match the rest of the cooler. These copper heat pipes start at the base of the cooler and go up into each heatsink tower in a U fashion. The base of the cooler is made of solid copper, of course, and seems properly machined to make smooth contact with our CPU. Getting the Master Air MA620M installed is much easier than previous Cooler Master CPU coolers that we reviewed in the past. We will be installing in our X470 test bench, so our installation process will be for the AM4 socket. You first want to fully remove the AMD stock socket mount and backplate, and then go ahead and install Cooler Master's own backplate. The included backplate works for both AMD and Intel sockets, so you want to make sure the text AMD is facing towards you when installing the backplate on your motherboard. With the backplate installed, the next thing to do is install the AMD mounting bars. Cooler Master uses thumb screws for this, which makes installation pretty easy. Now go ahead and apply the included thermal paste on your CPU, and then very carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws on each side of the cooler with the holes in the mounting bars. With everything lined up, go ahead and screw in each side. After everything is done, this is definitely one of the easiest installations of not only a Cooler Master CPU cooler, but just a air cooler in general. With the cooler securely fastened to your CPU socket, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is connect the fan to the CPU fan header on your motherboard, and then connect the RGB elements to either your motherboard or the supplied controller. Now, Cooler Master includes cables to connect to all major motherboard brands, but we decided to use the included controller. When you power your system on, you'll notice the RGB LEDs on the cooler light up. I really like what Cooler Master has done with the RGB lighting. It's sleek and stylish, but not too much in your face. Using the supplied controller, there are a handful of preset effects in colors. When it comes to testing, we first are going to test our idle temperatures, which are taken on the Windows 10 desktop an hour after the system has been turned on. Lower temperatures are better, of course. Moving on to load testing, we will be running the ADA64 system stability test with the CPU only checked. This puts a full load on our CPU and we run this test for one hour and record the highest temperature throughout the test. Again, lower temperatures are better here. Thank you. 
Having a single fan for such a large cooler, we expect this cooler to be much quieter than other larger coolers that we've tested. Using our dB meter, we measure the noise level during both idle and load scenarios. All right, guys, so at the end of the day, I think this is one of the best coolers that Cooler Master has ever come out with and definitely one of the best coolers that we've reviewed all year. Starting with performance, this thing is a beast. It's going to be able to handle pretty much anything you throw at it that it's built for. Um, that includes, you know, Ryzen 9, Ryzen 5, Core i7, Core i9, even high-end desktop processors. This, you know, cooler should have no problem with. In our testing, it actually performed third best overall out of all of the coolers that we've tested. So that is really good. And the other coolers that actually beat it are bigger and they use dual fans where this uses a single fan and that's where it comes to design here. I absolutely love the design of this cooler. It's made to look like one big heat sink so you really can't see the fan but it's actually hidden in the center there. I love that. I love that it's all black. It's going to look good in pretty much any build out there and of course they've capped it off here and you do get the RGB lighting. Um, but the RGB lighting, you know, you can use the included controller or you can connect it to your motherboard using a three pin ARGB connection. And then installation, you know, in the past, Cooler Master has had problems with their installation. It just wasn't good and it just wasn't designed well. With this, this is one of the easiest coolers that I've ever installed. Pretty much two screws, you know, and you're in there. It's just that easy. Now, when it comes to price, this cooler is a little bit expensive. It's just about $100, but those other coolers that perform better than this in our testing are right around the same price as well. And I think that this cooler looks better and it just, you know, it's just a better cooler overall for what you're getting. And it's gonna run quieter as well because again, you only have a single fan. Now, if you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.